Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our satisfactory 1.0 playthrough, where, look at that at the top right, we are almost done with phase three, pretty exciting stuff. I went ahead and whipped up a two fuel generator uh, blueprint in anticipation of our blender. Um, I wanted to do four, but the problem is that, and it won't let me build it now, because it would be, I could just build it like this, why not? Um, you know, there's a thought. Well, I already saved this blueprint. The reason that you can't do four is because the outputs are so, you they literally take up exactly one quadrant of the blueprint designer. So there's no wiggle room on where you put the fuel generators, right? If you put one in front of this, look, it's just right there. And then you put this one here, and it's right there. They're exactly two and a half foundations by two and a half foundations. So there's no wiggle room on where you put them. And then the problem is, it, it almost feels like this would work. Like, oh, you could just put a connector, but it, it won't let you encroach clearance with connectors for some reason. Like it does with splitters. Splitters and belt splitters are way more convenient. But now that I know... We can put one higher. What if I put this up like two meters? Um, it's just just a crazy thought. Like, what if we do, do our foundations like this? We zoop that one there, and then I do the half foundation two meters in front of it. Um. And then I put this all the way, wait, is that, why are you encroaching now? You were happy with this before, oh, is that, that's right, okay, there we go. What if I put that there? Maybe, maybe there's something to this, maybe this isn't insane. It feels a little insane. Um, okay, well, it does ruin that, but maybe, um, the problem is it's going to clip through, so if I rebuilt this, it should put that support extending to the ground, yeah, so then there's going to be clipping on this almost no matter what I do and it doesn't realize oh wait a second oh no are we gonna get into some shenanigans here is this actually oh my god <laughs> oh oh my hold on now hold the phone we might be up to some shenanigans this might just work all to save me a few clicks um Surface is too uneven, but I literally just built the other one in the same way. What do you mean surface is too uneven? Get out of here with that bull crap. What? 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 Um. Maybe I needed one of these. Let me do it. Okay. Wait. That one's lower than that one. That doesn't make any sense. Why is that one off the ground? There's some weird shenanigans afoot. Um, some weird shenanigans. So, if I lock the blueprint, is that on the ground or is it... No, why is it up? That's so weird. Why is that up? If I hold H and then nudge it, now it's down on the ground where it's supposed to be. Okay. 
Now those don't really connect, but that's to be expected. The important part is now I have four fuel doodads and I'm hopeful that I can maneuver this guy out of there without egregious clipping. Um, you know what, I might have actually needed that extra little height, because now that looks bad. So weirdly enough, I need this to be up higher. Was that one meter higher? Um, probably was. So like, it built itself a little higher than it was supposed to be before, but that actually ended up being what I wanted. Uh, so now hopefully we can get that going correctly. Okay, is that right? I think that's right. Uh, except it didn't build those things pointed down probably because of the pipes. Hey look, our phase three is done. <laughs> Let's go work on that. Uh, we'll come back to this. Do do think this is gonna work though. Maybe. Will it extend the doodads now? Okay, now it didn't extend the little supports at all. What is going on? It's very inconsistent with uh, what it does with its little feeties. Why are its little feeties not extended? Isn't that weird? Now it's saying the surface is too uneven, but if I hit H, it lets me build it there. So wonky. I kind of liked when it had the little feedies. Maybe I can... Uh, make my own little feet. It doesn't look great. Alright, let's go finish phase three, y'all. Let's go finish phase three. We'll, we'll party. Party with some cluster obelisks as well. All right, let's do this. Ooh, how exciting! We're gonna see it get built. Let's take a little, take a before and after. All right, space elevator. Load the cargo. Seal the container. Container sealed. <sighs> Not put Welcome Lizard Doggo in the, project in the gears. Assembly Pioneer Progress Presentation. Congratulations. Congratulations. The Phase 3 project part shipment is finally ready for delivery. On delivery, Phase 3 will be completed up, and Aylor? the main body will be constructed. You should know how this works by now. You'll get access to tiers 7 and 8 Hover in the pack. Home. In fact, perhaps you should just go look at the technologies there yourself. It's all laid out so that even a monkey could understand even it, a monkey? so you should have no right. issues. Speaking of which, I don't think you need a reminder about project oh parts. Instead, I will be providing some interesting facts. Did you know the average pioneer succeeds at saving the day? Did you know the average pioneer knows how to optimize pipe throughput? Did you know the average pioneer stays late at work because they care about humanity? Yeah. Anyway, I thought you might want to know more about your peers. Good luck in phase four. The average pioneer works overtime. Heck yeah. All right, let me get a little, little screenshot of that part. And here we go. Off it goes. Let us watch. Pretty good pioneering indeed. Off it goes. Now we get to see new parts being built onto the space station. Alright, so it's building out the ring around the edge. And then 
that's that. A little, little side platforms get extended. They've got color to them instead of just the frame. Getting more docking looking things. All right, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. What do we got available? Phase Let's go to the hub. Project assembly completed. Fix its predictions indicate pioneers should generally reach this point faster with above average results, but we should all adjust our expectations according to the situation. Thanks, Ada. It is understandable. The pressure and complexity will only increase from here, so be sure to take on phase four with efficiency and competence. Will do. I still have a uh, tier two pipeline. I've completely forgot about this. Um, let me grab plastic and rubber. Try to finish that out. We still need a little bit more plastic. I do think I want another stack, uh, but it'd go up to 120 a minute. Do I want 120 a minute or do I want four stacks for my dimensional depots? I only have the Mercer spheres for one of them. Yeah, they did so much with 50 smart plating, but with a thousand more expensive bits. Yeah, that's true. All right, so here's bauxite refinement. Gets us to being able to scan for bauxite if we couldn't already. Actually, we can't yet, yeah. And then we can make aluminum ingots. Wonderful. And aluminum sheets and casing. That's a whole thing. Hover packs. Glorious, but I need aluminum for that. Mark V belts, same thing. We need aluminum. Hazmat suit needs aluminum. We need aluminum for everything, so that's all in the future. And the blender needs aluminum. Okay. I was hopeful that we could maybe make the blender without all clads. Um, 200 and 400. I might actually have that. So let's skip ahead. Also tier eight, what do we got in here? We need radio control units for drones. Nuclear power, heck yes. We need the supercomputers. Um, more radio control units for the resource wells, which lets you get nitrogen and water. And apparently there's oil in that same type of vein. And that's where we get fused modular frames, cooling systems, and heat sinks. And then minor Mark III's and turbo motors come way later. And then finally we got our plutonium fuel rods, copper powder, and nuclear pasta. All right, so let's see. If I can fudge this a little bit. Ah, I need computers as well. Okay, well, we need to automate computers anyway. That's next on the list. But I really wanted to get more power going, so I may uh, go fast. Let's see what happens here. I can deconstruct these, because this was for my project assembly whatnots. Whatnots and mahoozits. Get rid of all this stuff. And... Go away, go away, go away, go away, go away. You too. Alright. Nope, one more. Oh no! We have too much crap. Um, let's get rid of some concrete some rip, some steel. I guess I should set up over by my awesome sink over here. Let's set up a dump station. Set it up on this side. Will a merger fit onto here? The answer is no. I bet a merger will fit in front of it. And then we can connect that to here. And I can connect that to there. And now this is a dump station. Beautiful. 
Alright. I'm gonna dump that automated speed wiring or whatever it's called. My smart plating. And did I end up with some of those engines? No? Oh, I bet they're down on the belt. So yeah, yeah, we got lots of extras there. Alright, let's see how many points that gets us. Uh, 475,000 and... Ooh, nice. I mean, it's not that crazy, but it's points. Alright, so we need... I guess I should finish this. It's in the way. <laughs> Crap. Uh, we need to work on computers, but first let's see if we can figure out the rest of this fuel power blueprint. I, I'd like it to work. I'm curious why the little feeties aren't appearing anymore. I wonder if we can get them to appear. That is still on top of that. Okay, now they appear. Weird. Removing those. I don't know why that idea occurred to me, but it actually worked. Um, and then that one goes there. Perfect. And now we can do some chaos underneath under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. Alright, that's gonna go in line with the edge. Up two. I might need to go up three. We'll see if that's a good height or not. And we'll put that in line with the edge. Up two, and then three. And then when we connect our pipe, I have a feeling this is not going to connect up quite right. But if it does, we'll be in... Oh, it does, baby! Heck yes! All right, all right, all right, all right. And then we'll do another one. Kind of near the end. I'll have to measure it out, maybe right on that. That? Oh right, it won't, it won't, <gasps> it does snap when it's vertical. Oh, is that the way we get it to snap? That might be the, the snapping method. Um, and then I can horizontal to vertical that. It's a little bit of an angled thing rather than right angles. I guess I could make it right angles if I put this in the right spot. Uh, that goes too far. What's up, B Jonas? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. That's actually relatively clean. Um, okay, so Mark II Blueprint. This is going to be a good YouTube episode when I when I can show people how to fit <laughs> four, four uh, fuel uh, doodads into a Mark II Blueprint design. I am going to finish the foundation so they don't look as bad. Um... I also think I want the concrete design. Which... I'm gonna uh, deconstruct the ones in the back first. And then I can concretify you guys. build them. Alright, there we go, there we go. Okay, and now we need to do the same thing we just did, but over here. So I take the stackables, put them right here on the edge. 
I go up two. We do a pull. We connect the pipe. We have... Maybe it'll snap. Now, yeah, so the trick to snap your pipeline junctions is to put a flat one on the ground. Kind of like you can with splitters and mergers, actually, weirdly enough. Um, and then we should be able to go... Oh, shoot. What method... You get weirdly stuck on things down here. What method did I build that pipeline with? I think it was the HTV. Uh, horizontal to vertical, that is. And I built it next to the, the foot thing there. But I rotated it like that. And then we built it... Right there. Yep. Wait, why is it? What the heck? Click. Oh, I have to click twice. Okay, I don't know what. And then I think it's here. And then I think we snapped the vertical there. And then I think we did horizontal. Uh oh, it's doing something different. That's not what it did before. What a heck. Actually, what the heck, though? That's not what I did before. It did that. It was so nice and beautiful. And I'm pretty sure it's the same... It's definitely the same spacing to the same spot. Oh, there we go. Maybe I have to build bottom to top rather than top to bottom. I don't know what was different. Hey, good luck on the stream, Bordro. Have fun. Okay. That's, that's it. We did it. We freaking did it. And now we disconnect these ones on the end because those are going to be um, overlapping with the, the ones in the front. And yeah, we had to use some foundations, a little bit of verticality that could bother some people. Um, but it's not going to bother me. And now to get power between the two... We will need to figure something out. I, technically, I don't. I could let that be on the other end of the blueprint, AKA like leave it up to the user to figure out how to set up their power um, post placing the blueprint, like how to get the two sides connected. But I think we'll figure it out. Uh, that needs to go one further back actually. Okay, so we'll figure out how to get that connected. I need to pause real quick, so I'll be right back. Welcome back, future YouTubians. Um, had to do some cooking stuff, and then I forgot to unpause. So to catch you up, uh, we have set up our computer line right here. We've got Caterium and circuit boards and the other thing, rubber coming in. Caterium computers are a little pricey on the Caterium end. I'll be interested to see if we run out of Caterium. Um, I am doing silicon circuit boards so that we don't use Caterium there as well. But we'll see. All that to say, we now have computers, and I'm going to be working towards... There's so much rubber here. I'm going to be working towards getting, as you see in the top right, the control system development, which allows me to have blenders. The reason I want blenders is for the diluted fuel recipe. It's so much stronger. If you look at the ways we can make fuel, there's residual fuel, which is better if you have the, which I do, the heavy oil residue recipe. So you actually get more residue than you get, than you put in crude. So that alone is, also, I just realized these have fuel values. You can just straight up connect crude oil to fuel generators and call it a, a day. That's kind of nice. Like, it's not amazing, but a single pure node overclocked so that you're getting the 300... Like, in a Mark One pipeline, 300 crude oil a minute is 5 per second, right? So that means you'd get 1.6 gigawatts off of a single thing, and you don't have to process stuff at all. That's worth considering in the, in the early to mid-game, like, 
prior to the point I'm at now, I would have done that if I had realized that you could just burn crude oil. Because it has an energy value. I assume that means you can use it in a fuel generator. Um, anyway, this is obviously a recipe you use to get the heavy oil residue, and then the diluted fuel recipe doubles this. So then you go from four to eight. If you don't do the doubling one, um, it goes from four to, what would that ratio be? It's from three to two. So it's basically four to like two and a half or something. Um, so yeah, the diluted fuel is the way to go because it turns it into two X the amount instead of less. <sighs> that being said, the blender makes it so that you don't have to package the water and then unpackage the fuel. It saves you two packaging steps per unit, which is pretty huge given that packagers are slow. If you look down at the bottom right there, you can see that, you know, fuel packaging is only a 40 a minute process. I think water packaging is 40 a minute. Let's double check. I think packagers package everything at the same rate. No, they don't. That's weird. Uh, so water gets packaged faster. That's a 60 a minute. Fuel is 60 a minute unpackaging. Weird that unpackaging is faster with some things, but not faster with other things. Like, look at that. So unpackaging heavy oil residue is extra slow. But like with water, unpackaging is faster than packaging. It's really interesting. I wonder... I guess they de decided that balancing it, balancing those numbers is more important than having a consistent, like, uh, method. Because clearly those numbers are whack. Uh, what am I missing? Circuit boards. Oh, there's a couple. And these are all running. So I'm getting 75 circuit boards a minute. Um, and that gives me each computer. Oh, I didn't select the recipe for all these. Uh, each computer is four circuit boards. So 75 divided by four is like 18. I'm getting roughly 18 computers. These should be running constantly though. Because I have I have enough circuit boards. I guess half of, no, I don't. Half of them are going into the dimensional depot still. But we're so close to being backed up on that. And once we're backed up on this, then, then we're good to go. Also, I may have pointed this out. It's actually frustrating to me, again, that you can't close off slots for an exact reason like this. Because if you, if you were to try to do the jank version where you fill the empty slots with leaves or something, then it, it would flow the leaves into the dimensional depot and clog everything up. So it, there's actually a very good reason. It's like, I don't want that many, but I also want more than just 200 plus 600. Like, like I basically just want like five extra stacks. And there's no way to do that right now, other than like a long ass belt or something. I don't know. It's just a little frustrating to me that you can't block slots in a storage container. And we've already had that debate quite a few episodes ago, but it does bother me. All right, let's get all our circuit boards out of our inventory. And that will... Uh, can you circuit control the inserter? Uh, <laughs> You're thinking of Factorio, my friend. Oh man, I wish we could just circuit control belt sections in this. That would be so nice. But yeah, look, computers. We're doing the computer thing. Those are all going into the Dimensional Depot for a very long time. Computers, I might... Uh, it's going to take so long for the storage container to fill up. Should I? You know what I might do? I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll Summer Sloop. A single one. No, unfortunately, you cannot build a smaller one. 
technically there's the one that doesn't have belt connections, that's smaller, but not having belt connections defeats the whole purpose. Um, and I think I can turn these back on now because our HMFs are now backed up. So we can turn this guy back into normal HMF production. And we'll do the same thing, you know, with computers that we were doing with HMFs. Basically, until they're backed up, we'll use summer sloops to get freebies and faster. Um, so this is like two and a half of them running instead of four, but we're doubling the production. So it's kind of like five of them running, but for the cost of two and a half. Yeah, Hansa, I could do some sort of overflow method where I have them go straight into the dimensional depot. Uh, not, there's not really a way to do it, though. Basically, I want to fill up, like, 500 into storage, and then from there, no more. And there's just not a way to do that. Hey, have a good night, Sleepy Pete. Or, Sneaky Pete. <laughs> I guess you are now, Sleepy Pete. <laughs> That's funny. Uh... Didn't mean to say it that way, but it turned out it turned out to be a pun. Uh, I like it. I like it. Anyway, I need 200 computers. Do I have that many? I'm to the point where I need to start typing in here. I do not have that many. Maybe what we'll do is uh, we'll do shard up and sloop up two computer makers, and then we then we're getting quite a few more. To the point where I'll... Uh, I might be able to sustain this, believe it or not. I, I have 75 circuit boards a minute, just exactly. And I think I have 260 quick wire if it's not going to other places. And I definitely have 100 rubber. At least I think I have 100 rubber. Let me go check on our... We have a pretty small rubber and plastic plant, but I think I sharded them up. But that's that doesn't look like that much rubber, actually. How much are we making? Um... So loud. I think I'm only making 150 rubber a minute, to be honest. Yeah. So that's not that much, but it's enough. I think. So we're fine for now. Um. Yeah, okay. So we need a thousand plastic. I think I'll go for four stacks of Dimensional Depot stuff. I'm gonna put the other part to this launcher. Feels weird to have a launcher in only one direction. So, we need more plastic, we need more computers, computer, I can type the ter part. I always try to figure out, it's kind of like a mini game for me, in games with search bars for items, I'm trying to quickly process what, what letters can I type in a row with my left hand only that search for that particular item. It's, a, it's kind of a fun mini game that I play. Alright, we need way more plastic. Um, it's kind of annoying. I have tons and tons of plastic and rubber built up, but it's all the way, you know, where I'm putting these in the dimensional depot. Also, can you, can you have two dimensional depots uploading the same item to the cloud? Did we talk about this? Does that get you more of a rate? Probably not. It's probably more like the cloud is pulling from dimensional depots that have that item in them. Um, wait, Hansa, that does increase the rate? So if I had two dimensional depots with plastic, the rate would increase? And I guess that would be a really crappy way to get more of a buffer. Like we could have three dimensional depots uploading and then that's three stacks that are not in the cloud plus the stacks that are in the cloud plus whatever's on the belts leading up to those three depots. So it like sort of helps. 
Wait a second, we gotta test this. I did not know this was a thing. You have for steel beams. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So, right now, we're at the 60 a minute. Uh, why is that not lining up with control? It's so hard to see. Okay, whatever. You know what? Just give me some space. Alright, so... If I were to take out... Let's do something... Random. Um, silica. Then it's clearly filling back up at a rate of one per second. And I think we'll definitely be able to tell the difference if it's going faster than one per second. So now if I look at silica... That is three per second. Oh my gosh. I did not know we could... I don't... I felt like I... I don't know. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, you can get around the rate pretty easily by doing that. Interesting. It doesn't really help with the storage that much. You know, like I said, you get one more stack in the depot itself. But that's it. Um... But anyway, uh, plastic, I have some more over here. Let's just go grab it. And then we're going to see what it costs to build a blender. I'm hoping it's pretty cheap in terms of aluminum. And so I can just build a few with the materials I already have. Oh, I guess it doesn't build up because I have the overflows getting sunk. Um... So then the only place I'm going to have plastic is on my circuit board buildings. Wait, those aren't even using... I'm not even using plastic anywhere yet. Dang. Okay. I can play this fun mini game where you just hit E as fast as you can. I use the two finger method. This is peak gameplay right here, guys. Man, look at this. Look at that. All right. Is that enough? 340... Okay, yeah, that's enough. All right, get out of here. Get out of here. I'm just going to ruin all of Project Assembly. One cluster novelist. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's going that way? We can make that work. Oh wait, my mam's over here. I got mixed up. You use 6x for materials? I, I have been fine with just one depot for everything, with the exception of a few times concrete and iron when I'm building a million foundations. That's the only time that the upload rate has really uh, been a, a thorn in my side. Everything else has been fine. All right, here we go. Our first tier seven milestone. Milestone reached. Several parts more efficient and powerful than the what human did we brain even unlock? can now be made to compensate Batteries, for many deficiencies control, otherwise encountered in future development efforts. Stuff I don't care the about. The blender enables you to mix and or combine parts and fluids for more complex recipes. Most importantly, project part number six, the assembly director system, oh should be produced and delivered to the space elevator as soon as possible. I only need 250 of them, that's not that bad. But that means we need to make ACUs again, which means I need to make the auto the wiring systems again. So it, it really does build up. So if I were to play through again, knowing that you use them that many times, I would probably leave those builds in place and let them stock up into a, you know, into a, a container. Anyway, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm seeing what the blender costs. Yes, yes, yes. Blender. Yes! It only costs 50 casings. And I can I can afford that. I have a lot of casings from from sites. I can build 
four, five, six blenders. Okay, so let's see. What, uh... What all can a blender do here? Wait, what? Are you kidding me? It's a separate alternate recipe? No, that's garbage. But it's the same recipe. Hold on. Have I been lied to? I need to open a Google. Um, I was under the impression that one of the alternate recipes, diluted fuel. So diluted fuel is a different recipe than diluted packaged fuel, even though it's the same thing. It's just the water is in liquid form and the output is in liquid form. That's really dumb to me that you need a separate... Mm, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. All right, well, let's... I'm probably gonna want wet concrete, to be honest. It, it doubles your limestone, and 80 a minute's a pretty good rate out. So I'm actually gonna take that one, rather than re-roll it. Um, but most of these I'm gonna re-roll. And quartz purification, huh? What is that? Dissolved silica? Uh, that's definitely more important than bio coal. And I can't re-roll a second time. Uh, what about this? I'll re-roll that. Those were literally the two options I just had, weren't they? Quick wire statter seems terrible. I mean, it's a little less steel. And I hate tempered caterium ingot, but I'll grab it. Um, don't need either of those. We already have those. Okay, now here's, here's where things get interesting. Turbo blend fuel. That's got to be better, right? Oh, we have to do math now. So we have to decide... So this is equivalent to three, three of the compacted coal, and essentially ten fuel, right? Because of the diluted fuel, four residue can turn into eight fuel. So this is essentially ten fuel and three compacted coal to make six turbo fuel. So basically, you're using way more fuel, but less compacted coal. This is not a very good recipe, I think. Um, because we could just turn that heavy oil residue into fuel. It's true, compacted coal is kind of, it could be the bottleneck, but yeah, it's 45 parts a minute, but the blender's also like, a lot bigger than the refinery, so it's not that in terms of width. I don't know. the The rate here is not that huge of a boost. I mean, yes, the blender's shorter than the refinery, but it certainly is wider. I don't know if it's lengthier. I'd, I'd have to measure. So what's the actual ratio? Ten to six versus six to five. 10 to 6 is 1.7, roughly, 1.67. And 6 to 5 is 1.16. So that's a significant difference in terms of how much fuel we're using. Uh, power requirement, I don't really care about. For something like a turbo fuel factory, it's going to be such a small percentage of your factory's power to make the same amount of turbo fuel per minute. Uh, now, radio control units, this is probably good. I don't actually know, though. We're using one oscillator to make three instead of one oscillator to make two. That's pretty good. Um, we're using about 20 aluminum casing instead of 16. So that's pretty close. It's a small boost in aluminum usage. And instead of two computers to make two, Basically, instead of one computer each, 
I'm using three circuit boards and 10 rubber. That's way better. And it's made 4.5 a minute instead of 2.5 a minute. So that's actually a good recipe. Um, okay, pure iron. I don't care about right now. Leached Caterium. Now there's something. 9 to 6 if we use sulfuric acid. Um I'm already I'm already on the silicon circuit board train, so we'll grab that one. Um I might actually want flexible framework at some point. Nah. There's more leached versus pure I don't know, I just, I might want more iron someday, whatever. Alright, I guess now is the time to scan a couple more hard drives too. Um, reroll, come on. Recycled rubber is important, um, I'm gonna want to, mi wow, that's so fast, look at that, 100 per minute. Uh, recycled rubber plus recycled plastic make it so that fuel essentially is one to one producing the other one because recycled rubber is six plus six make 12 and the other one six plus six make 12 so you can loop them with overflow such that you basically just are turning fuel into plastic or rubber and then obviously if you're using the heavy oil residue version the diluted fuel which is what i want i need that diluted fuel recipe um but i'm not getting it take pure copper Come on, come on, I don't want either of those. These are both bad. I don't think I'm ever gonna use steel canister. I say that now, but probably future Kredax is gonna be mad at me or something. And this one's bad. I've already looked at that, right? Because heavy oil residue produces two fuel a piece. So yeah, that that's just bad, bad. So I'll, I'll rescan that one for sure. If they're both bad, you can leave them and it won't roll them on later drives. Oh, that's so smart. That's smart. I should have been doing that. Thank you for reminding me that that's a thing. Um, so I'm going to leave that one for now. Copper rotor could be good at some point. Maybe? I don't really care about it right now. Coke steel, I don't care about. Okay. Iron pipe, I might actually take that, but I will leave it for now and not take it. Pure quartz. I think we already looked at that. It's not very good, but if you're really strapped for quartz, it's fine. Um, but we already have quartz purification if we're really strapped for quartz. 24 to 15. Um, oh, never mind. Quartz purification is to get you the quartz liquid stuff. Because it's actually about the same ratio of raw to quartz crystal. Uh, I don't want either of those. I will rescan this. <sighs> we get another quartz recipe. And flexible framework. We ignore that. Rubber concrete, pure caterium. I don't want either of those. And we're stuck with caterium wire and heavy flexible frame. Caterium wire, I may end up using at some point. It is an absurd amount of wire per constructor. It's just insane. And that makes it actually... Okay, so here's where all of the previous uh, analyses of alternate recipes have to shift slightly because of summer sloops. So wire is not normally something you'd want to spend a lot of summer sloops on. But with this recipe, a single summer sloop can get you 250 wire per minute. No, more than, sorry, I'm not doing math right. Uh, 300 wire per minute. In a single constructor, this recipe, when you, when you triple power shard it, is gonna be getting you 300 a minute. And then you throw in a summer sloop and now you're getting 600 a minute, right? And now this recipe starts to look a lot better because you can summer sloop the entire process for not many sloops. Um, so it is going to be interesting to see people analyzing like the ultra late game 
where are your sloops the most effective, which alternate recipes... Certain alternate recipes will make better use of them because they have such a high rate per minute. Anyway, unfortunately we do not have the blended... the blender version of the heavy oil, which is really what we need. Do you have enough metal to supply that? Well, that's the thing, is that recipe turns one into eight. So it it's a much more productive um, because basically three Caterium ore is becoming eight wire. I guess that's not quite as good as I thought it was. So this is more for the rate than anything. And then you'd probably want to use an alternate for Caterium ingots to help you out with Caterium. And there are far more alternates uh, for Caterium. I guess there's only one more alternate that we haven't gotten. This one's pretty cheap. Petroleum coke is only a third of a residue. So this is two thirds of a residue is basically playing the part of three Caterium ore. This one is actually a pretty good alternate. It's a little on the slow end, 22.5 in a foundry versus 15 in a smelter, it's it's actually, I think you're losing a little bit there because foundries are more than 50% bigger and more power and whatnot. But this is basically free, right? Because we've already talked about uh, the residue you get at a rate of four from three, right? So it's it's less than one crude oil it's three-fourths of a crude oil per residue. And so then three-fourths times two is six-fourths. So this is one and a half crude oil is essentially playing the part of three Caterium ore. Am I doing that math right? I think so. And that seems pretty good. Basically that's saying a pipeline of crude oil is like a pipeline of 600 Caterium ore. That seems pretty good. I mean, if you have enough oil. I think Caterium's a little more rare than that. It's free until much later when you have to use a lot of asphalt to make a space shuttle airport landing strip. That's funny. Um, Anyway, our, our hard drives are hopefully going to get us that recipe. I am going to be hunting for it because we need more power. Power is kind of the next big thing and diluted fuel. I mean, it doesn't look like it now, but I just need a couple manufacturers overclocked and we're already pushing up against this line. Um, I would like to be making closer to like 15 gigawatts right now. The question is, do we want to go straight for turbo fuel then? Probably. So maybe we start working on that. Yeah, maybe turbo fuel is the next thing. Because we can work on the turbo fuel without having that other recipe yet. Um, and we can just hopefully get it over time. And then the good news is that we can basically... Oh, you know, let me switch over my uh, fuel. We can basically get more power now, and then if we don't have the recipe, that's fine, because we can still get more power later. So yeah, I probably won't be able to build too much of it in this episode, but we can at least get started on a turbo fuel production plant, starting with the compacted coal. Basically, I guess we need to go to the sulfur first.
Which is over here somewhere? Yeah. Oh, you know, I can speed myself up on these guys. On sprint mode. Alright, so we'll grab sulfur. Coal is just to the east. Um, what are these nodes again? We've got a impure and a normal and a pure, I think. Yeah. So this is already like it can't even fit on the belt levels of production. Until we get Mark V belts, I can't even use all of that. Um, a normal node overclocked gets me 300, and the impure node overclocked get me 150. So this is basically a 480 belt. If I technically want the 480, I will have to use an overflow splitter on this other one, which I don't know if I want to do that. I guess it's not that hard. Um, so what we can do is we can do a merger here, we can do an overflow, or a smart splitter is what I meant to say. And then we do right output overflow, and we merge in with that. And then we do a merger in front of that guy. Alright. So here is a full belt of sulfur. Um, it will always have overflow because the amount that I'm using on the other end is not 480. And, and I could always, I'm not really relying on that, it's just like, I don't know. Maybe I should do it differently, but. I can configure it such that we always have that amount. Honestly, the better way to do it, now that I'm thinking, would be to just put a splitter. And then we're always getting at least half of that, which it won't... Well, no, but see, this is a, this is a problem. How do... See, the problem now is it won't use all of these two. We need priority mergers, damn it. Damn it, Dale. Um, so really, back to uh, the, rea the real way to do this is a conveyor belt Mark 1 and then a splitter. Oh, that shouldn't be going up. But this is dumb that I have to do it this way. I'll just say it outright. So half of 60 is exactly 30. That'll go there, and then we'll go back to a merger here. So that will steal exactly 30. Presuming the input is 120 or more, it will always take 30 or more. If it's taking more than 30, that's because this output is blocked, which means we didn't need the ore from there anyway. So, it won't, um, it will mean that these won't always run at full time, but that's okay because they don't need to be running at full time if this one isn't needed at the base anyway. So that, that all works out. I don't think we need to make any more modifications to that. And, and then, yeah, lack of priority merger really is a pain. I, I'm not sure. It, it feels very odd to me. I mean, you know the Satisfactory people have played a lot of Factorio. Like, it's the goat of the Factory games, apart from Satisfactory. And so you know that they, they've considered it. You know that they've thought about it. And you know they've asked the question, what would that add to the players? Like, what capabilities would it add? And, and I feel like... They're smart people, so you know they've come to the same conclusion that like, oh yeah, it's actually really useful in these certain scenarios when you want to keep things flowing in a certain way. 
So what I'm confused about is what are their reasons for not doing it? Because clearly those reasons won. Like the reasons for not doing it defeated the reasons for doing it. Hey, look, we found another hard drive. Um, and I'm just very curious what those reasons are. Alright, I'll take a free hard drive. In fact, I think we need to mam it up here. Mammy jammy. Uh, what do we get? What do we get? Quick wire cable, quick wire stator. I don't want either. And we get crap. Okay. Fine. Research a new one, please. And what was I doing? I already lost my train of existence. Um, oh, I was connecting the belt? Or I was just running? I'll just, I'll connect the belts later. First I need to figure out where I'm building this thing. It's to make dealing with byproducts harder. <sighs> but that, uh, so that comes back to a topic I discussed with Galdoc on the podcast regarding the new FFF, Factorial Friday Facts, which mentioned the reasoning behind why they hadn't, or one of the potential downsides to adding, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. They added the ability to wire up your nuclear reactors in Factorial in the, in the upcoming expansion. And they mentioned it's almost too easy, but that's no excuse to basically remove functionality is what they ended up saying. And I agree with that logic. They're basically saying as much as it kind of was nice to to force players into having to figure out how to deal with like their steam, you know, storage and whatnot. It, that wasn't a good enough reason to just have missing functionality in your game. And I think the exact same logic applies to this idea right here of like not having smart mergers. Yeah, like, yeah, having this artificial difficulty is a thing and it's kind of fun to force your players to solve it with like, oh, what about different belt speeds and like, oh, you have to get clever with it. But it's just such a glaring missing functionality that you have smart splitters, but not smart mergers. And I don't think, I don't know. I don't think it's, I personally don't think it's better for the game. Um, some people can argue that it is, and I, there's probably a lot of points on both sides of the argument. I'm, I am 100% sure that they've had that argument internally, and clearly the the haters have won out um, for one reason or another. But I'm not on the hater side. I'm on the I'm on the lover side. Be a lover, not a hater. I'm a lover of the idea of priority mergers. And unfortunately, it is not a thing. Oh, there's another one. Hi. He must have been damaged already. He did not take very many shots to uh, remove. I did consider for a minute. Um, if you're using summer sloops to produce biofuel, how much power are you actually getting from a hog? Because you double the alien protein, that's one step. You double the protein into biomass, that's two steps. You double that biomass into solid biofuel, that's three steps. And then you double that solid biofuel into liquid biofuel. You have four steps of doubling uh, with summer sloops. You do get a lot of fuel, it's still not really enough to compete with these other late game numbers, but it is pretty crazy. Um, I'm gonna grab... Holy crap, is this iron? It's such a weird place for iron, I feel like. I wonder if it's to be convenient for some other form of something that you... Oh, look, a summer sloop. I know, all sorts of great stuff over here. No! Okay, we got it. Before it spit out the crabbies. And then you're gonna try... Yeah, you're gonna try to kill me from over there still, so I can't let you just run rampant here um crap crap yeah they shoot like a mega bomb and it does it does a serious amount of damage when they shoot that it does like four yeah like four bars of damage i think i had about three missing and then i had like seven missing um 
anyway. Yeah, you can, there are multiple ways that you can go about kind of building a faux priority merger, but it's, it's just that. It's a faux priority merger. It's not a real priority merger. And so that does bother me a bit. All right, we'll snap to the global grid here. Um, I want to build over, over that so that we have lots of room. So we'll zoop out. Yeah, we'll just zoop out 10. We'll give ourselves some space here. I'll leave you be for now. And then this is going to be our coal. Let's get power hooked up. Uh, I've got power over here for the geothermal, so that shouldn't be too bad. There we go. Zip line on home. And yeah, we'll probably have to call it an episode soon, but let's at least get the, the coal and the sulfur together and in the same spot, and that'll be a good starting point for our compacted coal plant, which we then combine with fuel to make turbo fuel. Uh, I guess I don't need to bring power up to the sulfur, because we already have it. And I'd like to switch back to turbo fuel for that sweet, sweet vertical acceleration. Do I know the respawn mechanics for the enemies in this game? No, I don't. I know it has something to do with building factory stuff, but I don't know exactly what it is. I've never had any issues with it, so I don't really feel the need to, like, I don't know, research it and game it, but for the most part, I just ignore enemies, and they tend to disappear from factory areas. I really do wish there was armor, though. It, do it does feel weird to me that there's no way to defend yourself. There's only ways to kill the enemy. I guess that feels kind of fix it, doesn't it? But um, is there? There's actually sulfur on this, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, this work this work this way over. Hey, Hafalas. Um, we literally, the reason we were talking about it is because I just had a situation where I needed a priority merger. Now, the word need is maybe too strong, but like the thing I wanted to do was a thing that needed a priority merger. Now, are there solutions to what I was doing that don't use a priority merger? Yes. So the word need is debatable. But like to do what I was trying to do right then and there, I needed a priority merger. I wanted to use 30 of a source that was going to the base, but I only wanted to use that 30 to supplement another thing. I didn't want it to be part of the main thing. And there's no way to do that without a priority merger. And so it's in this case, it's not about even certain recipes or other recipes using more. It's like going to different places in your base a priority merger can help say, hey, use this one source before you use any of another source. And that's when priority mergers are useful. And that shows up in Satisfactory. Like you could say, hey, use all the iron from this area before you even touch iron from that area. And you can't do that without priority mergers. Um, again, not in a way that's jankless, at least. Also, hello, Hafalas. <laughs> Welcome. I should give you a shout out. Have you been streaming recently? I don't, I, I can't, I get everybody in the Red Circuit team mixed up, and I apologize for that. I can't remember if you were the one that was taking a break. I feel like you and a few other people have been taking a break. Um, a lot of people are having a tough go of the mental health times these days, which I completely understand. Yeah, okay, that was you. I feel like you weren't the only one, though, and heck, that was myself for a while. So, to all of you watching who are dealing with mental health, uh, just... Hearts to you. Hearts in the chat for everybody. We'll get the little, little Crydax 
heart emoji. I feel you guys. You'll make it through. Just keep on keeping on. Alright, so you connect to you. I know I said we weren't going to build this, and here I am building it. Um, I think that's pretty much all we need. And then compacted coal. So each one of these is 25 a minute. That's not very fast. I might power shard this. At least I'll double power shard it. And then I only need 10 of these. I might actually do slightly more than double power shard because then I can build nine, which is only three of my blueprints, um, which will be convenient. Also, I haven't done the math yet on how many freaking fuel generators can we run if I'm actually making 480 compacted coal. It's probably a stupid, absurd number, so I probably don't need to be worrying about this much compacted coal yet. Uh, cause yeah, what what is what is the actual number? Turbo fuel. So four compacted coal, meaning 480 a minute, would get me 600 a minute turbo fuel, which is 10 per second, which is 20 gigawatts. Oh, okay, that's actually not. I mean, that's a lot, but I I thought it was gonna be more. Um, that's still only 20 gigawatts, which will go pretty fast, to be honest. Uh, but it'll last me until nuclear, I think. So that's the hope. What am I doing? Assemblers. All right, and we will be done with the YouTube episode recording after I get this part done. So there we go. And all we got to do is connect up power. Connect up power. And then we connect up solar. Uh, yeah, right here. Sulfur. Sulfur. Coal. And coal. And that should do it. Oh, and the outputs. Bada bing. Bada boom. And if I'm not mistaken, that... Oh, I need to copy everything. Um, how many am I using? 18 power shards? That's acceptable. Uh, I'd rather use 18 power shards than build another 9 assemblers. And we're still gonna be short a tiny bit. This is gonna be 450, right? Yes. So then we need another... So each power shard is 12 and a half. So I weirdly need 3 more power shards. Basically, I need these to be 60. Oh, there we go. You go 60 a minute, and then I'll copy that, and you're 60 a minute, and you're 60 a minute. Okay, so then that is exactly 480 coal plus sulfur to make 480 compacted coal. And then, yeah, in the next episode, we'll be working with that to make a turbo fuel plant over here. It's gonna be great. Pretty excited, but we'll call this the end of that YouTube episode. So for all of you from future YouTube, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.